Remember to christen your beds with guinea pig bedding, right? Or rabbit bedding. Now it's the next day and I went to a nursery and I got an Anna apple fixing to bloom and a Florida gold peach tree, a nice size one, probably about seven foot tall. So again, we're, we'll talk briefly about this. You know, your question may be, or your idea may be, don't apples like wetter areas? Or at least are they taller, do they tolerate wet areas? And they can to a point, but there is a cutoff point. And I know based on growing them myself, where the roots stayed small they didn't penetrate into the ground very much because the more they went into the wet ground the more the roots rotted so the roots always stayed small we did get some productivity at a certain area you know got apples for a few years but the the tree was not happy it eventually fell over because it did not have a root structure to hold it in place I think I picked it up once or twice and kind of replanted it and it died. This was an Anna apple, same type. So here we go. Doing it in this method, will, will this fix root rot issues? Of course, it'll raise it up above that flood zone, hopefully. And, you know, will, will other diseases that may affect plants be you know will, will it have some resistance based on the fungal activity in its root the system other end of the spectrum the peach trees do not like wet feet at all so what more what a perfect experiment you know avocados peaches things that will absolutely die in the first year of planting when we get that first nice flood where it just root rot and dead doesn't come back the next year and is rotted into little rotten sticks you know some of the beds obviously that we've worked on we've put them in shade or under like an oak canopies and stuff but we really want the peach tree to be in the full sun or as much sun as we can get so we need to build another bed just for that peach tree and it is kind of sad because the this peach tree this this cost a little bit of, of money you know um They've gone up over the years, and I could have got, gotten a cheaper one from like the pre-packaged uh, things where they bulk send out to all the tractor supplies and various other farm stores, but they're often not on the right root stock, so they will die in a year or two. So we got them from a local nursery that has a nurseryman in the state that, that does this so this should be on the proper root stock and we probably do have a couple spots in higher ground that we could just plant it in directly and have a better chance of it surviving but it's not an experiment you're not going to gain any new knowledge if this is a success or failure based on you know doing these raised like age wood chip alternative beds or wood chips if you have wood chips. This area here is where I had the Anna apple that died and this isn't the wettest part of the area. It's probably two, 200, 300 foot away from our wettest area. But this here was a little dip that kind of holds water sometimes. So yeah, it might have grew seven, eight, ten years, suffered for seven, eight, ten years. It, you know, there's not a whole lot of sun here. I mean, it's more than, you know, you got pine trees up there and you got the camphor there that blocks the morning sun, but you do get probably two or three hours of sun in the winter and maybe a little bit longer than that in the summer. Do I want to put the Anna here where we had failures, build a bed there, or do I want to find a place with more sunlight i think based on having powdery mildew and all that stuff maybe aphids bothering it we probably need to have more sun and less shade here because you know more sun helps it dry off you know with the condensation in the mornings and after it rains and stuff like that high humidity already here in the southeast it either cut that ginormous camphor tree down and put it back where it was which i don't think i'm going to do it's probably 40 50 foot in the air and probably 40 plus foot wide or maybe do I put it you know in the wettest area of our yard 
and have a little bit more sun excess all across the sky a little bit in the morning midday afternoon until the last two or three hours when the sun goes down or maybe we put the peach and the apple somewhere in wetland zone one you know there's a nice open sky there you know I have planted a peach tree many years ago right here in wetland zone one directly in the ground and it did not come back the next year. We have an old buck pen here that is right outside of wetland zone one. Of course there's weeds like seven eight nine foot high here. Already has a lot of trees that fallen around here that we could help build a bed. We could probably put both of them right there if we had to. One on that corner, one on that corner maybe. Definitely have to remember too that a lot of the leaves are not on the trees right now. So there will be heavier shade in some of these areas when the summer and spring hit. The old tire for the wheelbarrow. So we're going to go grab some pine logs. These are some of the pines that were given to us. And I gifted back a sugar beltangelo to these people. And we'll probably do an, another update video once I get out to our canal property and show you guys where they planted it. We tried to plant it the other day in a video, but I think they might have had to take an auger because the root density in their property was so bad. Here where this other little wetlands area is with the hammock and the swing and the Meyer lemon, I think somewhere around there, which is a little bit wetter than here, we're gonna try to do the Maniola Tangelo. There are the first three. I don't know how we're going how many we're gonna need. Seven, ten, something like that. Make a little circle here. And it, there is standing water, you know, about eight foot from here. Possibly closer. Maybe about five foot. So we we probably still won't go all the way to the top of these when we start building it, but we'll see. Play it by ear. Alright, load two is here for our grass so far. Well, we either need one more or we need to widen it out and put two to three more here. That's three loads. Right, we got the last two here. Couldn't fit any a third one in here because these two are really large, just like the last load. Big around in circumference or whatever. I think that's all we're going to do. We're going to put that, try to expand it a little bit wider because if there's not a whole lot of middle area here, that means there's probably going to be a lack of different types of material here we want to maximize the different types of wood and leaves we get here to maximize fungal growth so there is the frame not too worried about holes in the you know where they meet because leaves sticks everything breaking down is going to uh, fill those spots I think we may go up with leaves and stuff to the top of the lowest ones lowest logs here or we may not even go that far I do wonder is over time as this rots down is it going to do like a landslide thing and we're going to lose dirt or should we kind of go over time on the outer frame and kind of slope it like a hill we got some pawpaw wood here let's see if we can not all of it's ready to break i guess easily river birch some oak some jujube we got to be very careful when handling that because they are full of thorns there are some trumpet vine here that has died off elderberry here's a nice chunk of cottonwood A little bit of box elder and I put a little tiny bit of red maple in there as well Camper. earlier. Got a big piece of dogwood. Let's see if we can break it. At least in half. Oop, that went flying. Let's see if we can find a nice area to rake some leaves. Right, we got a, mostly a big thing of sweet gums and uh, red maple leaves. Possibly some camphor possibly a small amount of oak and here we go again all right so just shimmy it down there over time it's going to drop 
need to put some uh, nutrient drenches in there and some different soils and compost our magic soil has to go there right, right. our stink water bucket here I always dread this and I did put some of my uh, uh, pumpkin uh, or squash um, leftovers after baking it in there look how dark that is and I really don't want to get any of that on my hands it always a little bit gets on there and it stinks bad you can probably see it bubbling there, so it's still working. All right, stink water all in there. Back to our magic dirt area, full of earthworms and just tons of fungal growth here. Out. So I'm just gonna get a heaping shovel full and just spread it around the bed. All right, there's that magic dirt, and we're gonna pile some uh, lime all over here. Of course, the wind's blowing. Probably should put some compost and stuff around we there have too. Some weed free black velvet mushroom compost. Let's put some of that on there. Good stuff, hopefully. We're going to do some simple garden, happy life uh, compost and cow manure mixture here. Just a little bit. Make everything happy. We have some of our ash or wood ash that we make kind of like our version of potash This is our little kiddie pool compost area and I used almost all of this last year So all, most of this is new Compost since last year when we used on the raised bed number one So let's go ahead and get a scoop of this right, as well. that good Compost and I even put lime on there lime generally will sweeten the soil and my dad used to use it on the muscadine grapes He, he did it every year along with I guess the nitrogen fertilizer but earthworms don't like super acidic soil so that's under oak trees it has a lot of oak leaves and different stuff in it so we add a little bit of calcium or lime to the soil just like when you're raising earthworms you know in your house or whatever you you, you might use peat or cocoa core or whatever or a mixture of a variety of things that's acidic and then you have to add that calcium or lime back into the soil otherwise the earthworms might just up and leave your beds so hopefully we've seeded it with good earthworms fungi and uh, bacteria and definitely some insects because i got ate up with fire ants filling that bed up. hopefully earwigs and beetles and a variety of other things as so well the bed we started fastest from start to finish, you know, before we planted our main tree and so far has been 23 days with that Meyer lemon tree. So how many days will it take to do the Mineola tangelo? So today is today, day one. Does anybody think we could be successful within, you know, one week of starting the bed, getting it ready and planting that Mineola tangelo and having it survive? I guess let's try to I finished these post mycorrhizal beds on the pear trees probably need a little bit more wood on this bigger pear uh, Bed and then mostly leaves on the other one camphor some unknown that Old dead mineola tangelo here Kind of hit it on the ground a few times to try to break it up All right, I just dumped a load of mostly pine needles so right in this area, we have a little bit of oak fall in here. We have a lot of sweet gum, camphor, and a little bit of red maple. What we don't have a lot of is pine. So those other leaves are constantly falling, probably bringing their own fungal growth and stuff. So let's bring this pine here and try to bring more fungal growth in here for the mycorrhizal activity. Right, now we got another half a bucket here. Whoop. For the smaller bed now we probably need more on that other bed probably at least double when we go to push everything in but for the time we have allotted I think we've done all we could today this particular bed here though I think is pretty much done unless it droops down really low we'll probably you know have to replenish these guys in six months or whenever anyway so we want to keep working get two or three more beds every day done but there's a poop out factor and kids and you know everybody else relying on me so I got to kind of you know I've been kind of blessed the last in this episode and the last episode having you know a few hours to work 
without you know basically being uninterrupted which is very nice the weather is pretty good it was like 50 uh seven or so when i came out high of 80 which sucks but the the wind is check out that wind very nice got a cool breeze coming in so despite it being a high of 80 it's it's been pretty uh good and i know my poop out factor in the summer once it hits 82 85 90 you know i'm not going to be able to work much at all outside so hopefully we have a cool spring and it'd be nice if we had a cool like june you know every once in a while we'll have a cool june but not super often Again, we're trying to get 11 to 15 beds set up between now and the end of the season very strange considering we worked for almost four months building uh, one raised bed on season one and now we're working trying to get 11 to 15 more right now i'm just trying to figure out where i want to set up beds for the uh, florida gold peach and the anna apple if we decide to go on wetland zone one on either one or both of them we'll probably have a crossover episode where it's like episode two of wetland zone one episode 13 14 whatever of the raised bed the good news is i can put one video on multiple playlists anyway i'm sure our time is up so take care guys until the next time